So now that we know how to create a program, let's try understanding how the Teach Pendant works as well as the Handling Pro software works. Um, Handling Pro software, you'll learn more as we go through it, but let's, the, the couple things I want to keep in my, keep you in mind is, is under the View menu, if you need to change the view of where the robot is, you can do the zoom in and zoom out right there. Um, this over here is the cell navigator. A lot of the things that we'll do is like by adding tools and some other things will be in here, and you can open up. Here's all the programs that are there. Um, uh, you can zoom in a little bit more. The tooling, user frames, dress outs, other things of that nature. Uh, your DCS uh, models, which that's another thing. Um, uh, other files, jobs, variables. So all the you know. These are all done. These can all be accessed in this Explorer menu. But if you don't want to have it there, you can just hide it through the View menu. So if it disappears, just do that. Okay. Um, under the Cell menu, this is where you will add robots and different parts and fixtures and everything like that. Um, so if you, when we start adding things, you can do that at the Cell menu. You can also do it through this Explorer menu. Um, the robot itself. This is where I can pull up the Teach Pendant. A lot of this stuff here is also right here so my start my, my recordings um, my my other you know flip the orientation you know all this other stuff it can be done right right in here um, so under robot couple well the big thing to keep in mind though is right here is restart the controller if I need to do a cold start a controlled start or an initial start well, this is where I restart start the controller that's a fail safe um, I'll show you another way on the teach pendant, but that doesn't always happen if you are using like an LR mate or some other types of robots. Okay. Um, you can see the work envelope. This is where you can look at the, m most of the ro robot stuff right in here. Teach, if I want to add a teach pendant, but, uh, or add a simulation program here, this is important here. So save all teach pendant programs. If, uh, when we start doing things, you may want to save something as an LS file. That's a text file that you can open up in Word. So for so that's a helpful thing, or you can do it as a, a TP. Um, test run is when we can actually start running through the program, and also projects we can add different files and if, of different types here to import things. Um, window. The other last thing is I'm gonna go under tools and op options. This is where you can change where if you're having trouble saving, um, this is where you would go and change the where your default paths are. Um, right here. So if you're on a network, you may need to change it to like a C drive or a local drive. Or if you want to always save it to like a thumb drive, that's what you would do. Uh, this is some of the other things you, you can turn on and off um, on the robot itself. All up in here. The only thing I'll mention is the, uh, is the colors. You can change colors here. And you can also change your template motion types um, right here. Okay. And when in doubt, help. So uh, again, your view menus are all right here. You have a measurement tool that you can pull up. So if you wanted to measure something, so say I want to measure here, measure from here, you know, measure from here. You know, so let me go from here to like here or something or from here, it will measure for me. So from here to and see it's giving me a measurement in three-dimensional space. So that's kind of nice. So it gives you that measurement and some of the, um, for those that know trigonometry, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, your uh, uh, x and a y variable as well. And you can see that there, there if you need to know. So just keep that in mind. I'm, I'm not going to turn that off. But let's talk about the teach pendant. And again, to click on the teach pendant, we can pull that up. Um, I mean, I must have hit it. And this is where you're going to have to do some more. And I apologize, my computer doesn't allow me to hide everything here. Up here, though, I can change. I can show the keypad or hide it. Um, if I want to have a, you know, the PC shortcuts, I can click. You know, I can disable the PC shortcuts, so it's just all up on here. Or just have it only be the P. The, the, you know. This is the eye pendant. Um, newer pendants look like this. This is what the old pendants used to look like. It's a little bit smaller. It's called an eye pendant. So if I wanted to go with the old looking, that's what this would look like. So if I'm running older robots, so just keep that in mind. If I want to turn that back on, I can click that right here. And it'll flip back to an eye pendant. 
Um, so you can lock this out so it won't be outside the main window, um, or you can close that down. So these are all things to keep in mind. Uh, this is the initial fl uh, the initial flash page, the, the initial screen. Here's all your status bars here. Uh, if it's run, if busy and running, these will be showing up different. This, these, you know, this the big ones to know is right here. This is step mode. If, if it by clicking on a, this button right here where it says step, it will change it when you run your program between one step at a time versus continuous. This is step mode. If I hit it again, it's green. It means step mode is off and it's in continuous. Hold is you know if, if something's gone wrong, but the, the other one is fault. If you see red, it's faulted. If it's a green that a green then you're good to go when we run a program this is where this will go green as well here's the, the, where your information is going to show up is right up here so if you get a fault it's going to show up here what job you're running is going to show up here what mode you're in is auto i'm going to flip this to teach and you can now see it's in t2 mode um so it's cancel and what jogging motion it is joint last time i showed you that if i if i hold down shift and hit reset um, I can then jog this robot one joint at a time. Okay. Well, that I can. There's other ways I can jog this robot. So if I use my uh, right hand rule, so it's my right hand rule. Assuming that let me move this around so you can see from the back end. Assuming, kind of right in here kind of right in the center right in the center of the robot kind of like where axis 2 is so let me go like like right here that that will be we can calculate the robot that that is the the center point of the robot and if I'm moving the one joint at a time, what you'll realize, let me jog and get this over here, that it's going to move in arcs. So let me go above it because you'll see this a lot better. So now if I hold down shift and X positive, uh, shift and J1 positive, look how it is, it's going in an arc. It's going in a circle because I'm only moving one thing at a time. Sometimes I want to move the robot so that it moves in a straight line in reference to the tool center point. The tool center point by default is the face plate of joint six. Um, and if I want to move that in a straight line, I can change this from joint to and by hitting this coordinate button to world. And notice now what shows up here, there's a X positive, a Z positive, and a Y positive. And where that is based off of is, is all in reference, and you kind of see a hidden line right here. Let me zoom in. Kind of right here, that it's calculating the distance of this tool center point from an origin that's right in the center of the robot. And it's going to utilize the right-hand rule, where my index finger will be X, my... my uh, Middle finger is, is y, y positive, and this is Z positive. And so if you take a look right here, right down the gullet right there, you'll see Z positive, Y positive, and X positive a direction. It doesn't matter how that orientation is like this. It's just going to take that one point and move it in those directions. Okay. And so now if I hold down, and that's why this is X here. So if I hold down shift and, and move it, as you can see now, that's moving a straight line. Where before it was swinging, now it's moving in a straight line. If you can see that. And you can see that, that the Y and the Z, Z values are the same. But if you look at that X value, it's getting smaller. Or bigger based upon X plus, and then I can do the same thing with Y. Take a look at this Y value. As I hit Y plus, Y is adding, but the X and the Z is staying consistent. Okay. I can do the same thing with Z, Z plus. Let 
Now, that's I can do that with a teach pendant, and I would recommend doing that at first because that, especially if you're not good with a teach pendant, this will get you in some good habits. But if you get good with a teach pendant, um, when it, when the robot is in this motion, we can move the robot by dragging right in the in in the Handling Pro software by grabbing the these little these little lines here. Now, be careful because watch right here. It's a grabby hand. If I pull it, it's going to pull that robot. In that direction but if I get to a point where it's here that's rolling extra based upon degrees see how that so before here's that and this maybe this rotating along the x-axis maybe a little easier to see so if I grab the roll look it's rolling based upon if I move it down negative move it up goes positive and now I just roll and so if you that's good in a pinch if you want to change the robot around or if you know what you're doing but if you're just starting out get in the habit of using the teach pendant because that's how you're going to do it in the real world and that's what these x rolls y and z rolls are so if i hit shift and x roll i can see how i'm going in a in a negative direction and i'm just rotating it back towards you know whole okay just keep that in mind. So I'm in world mode, and that will allow me to do it in, in, the, in a rectangular coordinate system or in the world coordinate system, because it's all based upon the reference of the origin, which is the center of the robot, in where that tool center point is, okay? And that's why it's important that you, and we'll, in another video, I'll talk about how we set up tool center points, um, and, because it's important. If I put end of arm tooling on there, you know, so say I got a, 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 a gooseneck um, arc welder. I want to move that robot where the work is being done. And so that's why when we start setting up the tooling, we, we want to make sure that we have a correct tool center point. And we'll talk about that in another lecture. But let's get back to, to moving this robot around and some navigation. So there, let me roll this. Okay. That's better. So now there's so I hit so cord goes between the different jogging systems. Now if I hold down shift cord, this will bring up the jog menu and I can actually click between each ones there. In another lecture we'll talk about tool and user because that's important because that could save your bacon. But just for right now, joint and world are the ones we'll will um, target. And if I want to leave, I just hit that. And if I hit it individually, it'll toggle through them all. Okay. Um, there's my joints. Also, menu is where you're going to find a lot of your main um, settings and stuff. So your I/O. So what, you know, what if you want to turn on a digital I/O or analog I/O or your robot I/O, which is robot embedded uh, I, uh, uh, inputs and outputs embedded in the robot. Um, where you want to do your program setups, that'd be a different lecture. But frames is one we'll, we'll touch on. Alarms. If you want to look at your alarm history, that's there. File. If you're going to save on the robot, that's in there. Um, but the other big one is system. This is where you'll do your variables and maybe in DCS and some uh, configuration is there. Um, data is where you will get your data registers and position registers. We'll talk about that in another lecture. But right now, um, oh, by the way, version ID, that's what I just want to highlight. Um, if On your robot, if you want to figure out what version you need to match your, to your robot guide, that's under version ID and you can see version uh, 8.30. Okay. Just keep that in mind. And the F number is going to be the, you know, is, is the, what I talked about in the last lecture. Just keep that all in mind. Um, you know, all that stuff can be getting to here. So data, if I want to get into registers, I hit data. If you look way down at the bottom, if, I, if you look way down at the bottom, there's a button that says position. And I might, let me do, go the old way just so you can see that so it's consistent. Because I don't want you to miss that. But way down at the bottom, you see position and I.O. Okay. Because if I hit this button here, this will give me the, the the joint position because right inside each one of those joints is a servo encoder that will know how many pulses from zero it is. And and what you might say, well, where is the zero point on the robot? And my question is, it, it will always be back, is it depends. Are you in joint or are you in what coordinate system it is? 
there are absolute encoder values that Fanuc has written down on those robots that knows exactly where those encoder values should be. But if something were to happen, where like you lose power and the batteries are dead, yes, there's batteries in the robot, and you need or an encoder goes out and you need to replace an encoder, that, that value might change. But based upon this, this is giving you the encoder value based upon um, uh, degrees of, of how far it is away from zero, where you calibrated it to. If I want to see what it's in relation to world, I hit F4, and this is the world, which is always in reference to the origin in the center of the robot, based upon what tool you're in. More about that in the next lecture. So X, Y, Z, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll. So yaw is X is X roll is uh, rotation around the X axis. Pitch is rotation around the Y axis, and roll is just the rotating of the Z, around the Z axis. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. So, but yeah, that's what this position and I/O value is. I'm gonna go back into I pendant because I like the, the screen better. I just my my um. Also, right here, these two buttons down at the bottom here, this is speed value. You can see the speed go up. This is the override based upon how fast the, the, the main robot is, uh, the, the main speed, okay? If I hold down shift and up, it's going to go to like 100 or it's going to go down by 50 and smaller. Notice, though, you can even get to fine and very fine, which is one like click at a time used for calibrating the robot, okay? I wouldn't jog in that normally. Um, but the other thing I want to point out is the function. This will be your friend, a function abort all. Um, this is how we get out of other jobs. One jo once a job is running and you want to change jobs, you got to hit function abort all every time to go be to run a new job. Okay. So usually what I'll tell people is hit function abort all to kind of reset the, everything. But that's important. The other thing I want to make mention of is this is the other place where you can cycle power. Um, not every robot has this, but you can do this in the function menu. The other point of mention too is this quick and full menus. If I click on it, you'll notice I have a lot less options in my, um, basically my menu. That's basically a, a, a cheat code to hide it from an operator so that they're not going on and, 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 and going and messing up with settings. So if you go in here to these quick menus and change it, then all these other, I get more options. Um, so that's basic navigation, um, how to jog the robot, how, some basic navigation in Handling Pro, and just so that you you are aware. And then the next thing, let's talk about, we'll talk about frames, and then we'll talk about uh, how we create jobs.